What is up? What is going on, David? SVA card collectors, and the weather has changed for the worse. It was 80 degrees in New York. Now it's like 50. I don't know how that happens. I don't know what Mother Nature is doing, but they are breaking our chops. Or if you're in New York, breaking your bulls. So, wanted to talk about something I actually was um, going back and forth with somebody about um, buying raw cards. Now, if you have followed me from the beginning, I have spoken about this before, but there may be some new people, all five of you. And I want to let those five people know that Yes, when you first start collecting, you start getting back into it, the first thing you think of is, wow, PSA graded cards go for a lot of money. Sorry, guys, I got to move my lunch. We all get lunch. Um, and so you'll look at cards, you know, and graded cards go for a decent amount of money, but the raw cards are so cheap. I have a brilliant idea. Why not buy only raw cards, get them graded, they'll get all PSA 10s, and I will rein in on all the profits. And then, you know, you think about Scrooge McDuck with the bank and you're swimming in it. Money, like a shower going on top of you. That's what I do, at least. So, it does not, does not, does not work out that way. But you do have the right idea about going about it. Now, if you buy one or two or three cards, more often than not, those cards will not get a PSA 10. If someone's selling a raw card, there's a reason for it. There's two. One, it's not a PSA 10. It's not good enough. And so they're just trying to get rid of it and have you make that gamble. Two, they just don't want to waste their time sending it out, waiting a couple of months to get it back because that's how long it takes to uh, get cards back. Um, Now, where you're getting these cards graded, for the most part, I would say stick to PSA 10. I'm going to not get into all the scandals and nonsense like that. It doesn't really seem to matter because everyone knows about these scandals and still PSA is doing great. So... I would stick to PSA because a PSA 10 gives you the most value. It's very, very, very difficult to get a Beckett pristine 10. That you get the most money in, but that is very rare to get. They don't give those out too often. So you, your best you would get is a 9.5, which would be from 50% to three quarters of a price. So if it's a hundred bucks, uh, a PSA 10, you might get between 50 to 75 in a Beckett, in a Beckett 9.5. So I suggest going to PSA, um, and it's also a little bit cheaper. Find someone who does bulk submissions, things like that. You go on a Facebook group and they'll do that. Look on Instagram, there's people that do that. Um, so back to what I was talking about. Now, you don't want to buy singles. What you want to do is you want to buy lots. You want to buy lots of cards, not lot, yeah, lots, you know, and, but it'll be like a lot of 10 cards. Those are the things that you've got to be looking for because out of those lot of cards, maybe six of those will be good or seven of those will be good because once you get into a lot of cards, now there's people who are maybe breaking cases, uh, breaking multiple boxes, and they're just trying to unload and get their money back. Um, So that's what you want to look at. That's what you want. Um, And you just keep buying them up. Now, I think the sweet spot for a price is $30. It could be a little bit more than $25, but $25 to $30, I think, is your sweet spot because that will protect you from prices going down, and and that's really the key. You could say, well, if if you figure... $20 $20 a card, you know, in a PSA 10, and it costs you around 15 bucks to get it graded. It costs you a dollar. Maybe it's a cheap, uh, you know, card, a dollar or two. And you're like, I'm okay with making three to four bucks. You have, 
A, I wouldn't be. But B, you have no room for, well, the supply, if there's more supply, the price going down. You have nothing. Plus, if you don't get a PSA 10, if you get a PSA 9, you're not going to get your money back. You're now going to be losing money because typically a car that goes for $20 and a PSA 10, you're not even going to get 10 bucks for it in a PSA 9. You're lucky if you get five, six bucks. So you want to make it worth it. You want to, and, and it's not easy to find these. That's the whole point. If it was easy, as Mr. Tom Hanks has said, everyone would do it. Figure out that movie. So I'll give you another hint on that. All the way may. So I suggest buying multiple lots of cards and then doing a, a, picking the best out of those cards and then sending them in. You can just blanket go, look, man, I stink. I, don't, I can't tell what's good and what's not. I'm going to send all these cards in. That's fine. But you will be paying a lot of money for stuff that's not good. I would cherry pick that stuff, and then from that cherry pick stuff, you'll probably get 60% at PSA 10. If you if you have if you have a better eye, and and you've been doing it and you have experience, I would bump that up to 70, because I've done pretty well on PSA 10s. You know, better than 60 and 70 percent, but. You know, you can clean your cards. You can, you know, make sure it's all wiped off. If, if it's a chrome card, you can um, actually put Meguiar's wax and rub that stuff in and then wipe it off to give it a nice shine because you're just cleaning the card. Um, I have a video on YouTube where I do that. And I also took that from uh, Dr. Cards, I think the guy's name is. Um, he, he also, he's the one I got that from. He does an excellent job. He wears plastic gloves. He, he, he thinks he's, he's a doctor, but he does a really good job. Um, so that's what you're looking for. You want to look for a card that's thirty dollars that you could probably buy for two or three bucks a card, and you buy a lot of them. You want thirty of them, forty of them. Now, most times they don't have lots of twenty, you know, twenty or thirty. A lot of five, a lot of seven, a lot of ten. That's fine if you buy a bunch of them. And then from there, you cherry pick the best and you send them in. Now, you should only be looking at, I would say, tops. And if, for example, if you're looking at this year, top series two, and then whatever tops update, I don't have the checklist yet. I don't know if it's up yet. Um, I didn't check last night um, to see. But typically, you're looking at tops update. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to buy some boxes of 2018 Tops Update. You can get some raw cards. So I've been buying Eloy Jimenez. I also think another good buy. If you have, um, you know, if you think this guy's going to be good, Otani, I think, is another guy that is going to be cheap because he's hurt. Um, this is the second time he's getting hurt. Um, he should be back to pitch and hit by the beginning of next year. So we'll see right off the bat. Is he back? Um, and if he's back to his old self. Now, there's plenty of other cards that fit this category. You just have to look. You have to search. I would look towards first Bowman cards, refractors. First Bowman, Chrome, they do go for money, but it seems like the refractors go for more. And if you can get a refractor at 2 $3, for a guy that you, that's like, if he's like on $20, $25 and he had a good triple A, you know, a good season and you want to take that gamble, that's fine as well because you think it's going to go higher. Typically, if a base card's going for $25, $30, now you're going to see a refractor going for $35, $40, maybe even $50 sometimes on auctions because you have, you know, people bidding it up because they want that card. So those, that's where I would be looking at, you know. Like, I've been looking at Nico Horner, his refractors. Now, where would you buy these cards? Typically, you buy them at card, um, card shows. eBay or Comp. I would say another good spot for the stuff that I'm talking about is Comp. Because there, you can just sit, 
look at the cards, analyze it, scan it. You can also do that with eBay, but they don't do each individual card. Um, on comp, you could do that. You can look at each individual card, take your time, all right, I want this, I want that, I want that, and you get it. And you save on the shipping for comp. Um, eBay, usually you have the lots, but again, now you're taking more of a risk because you can't really see all the cards. It's really the centering that's the most important thing with PSA. Um, they let you get away with a little bit sometimes. When I first started um, getting back into cards, they said centering PSA has a little bit of leeway, Beckett, not so much. In some instances, I do see it, and in other instances, I don't. It just depends on the guy you get. Just make sure your thing is centered. You look at other PSA 10s, and you can get a good grasp of the centering. Front and the back. Oh, check the back as well. You can have a perfectly centered card, but if it's off-centered in the back, um, it may knock you down a notch. And you may want to take a chance. You may take a gamble at it. But um, just be wary. All right? So... To recap, one, figure out the movie that I said. Two, um, look for lots of cards. Look at comp. Identify a player. Stick with, I would say, stick with refractors. If it's a, um, a Bowman Chrome, stick with refractors. I don't suggest you going after uh, Bowman Chrome rookie cards. Um, they haven't been going on PSA 10s. They've been getting similar prices, and I think the raw cards have been more money than a base, you know, card. This is a general, general uh, generality. Yeah. So it may be different for each card, but on the most part, what I'm telling you is true. All right. I would stick with Topps uh, flagship series, Topps Heritage, um, and really Topps Heritage high number, where, wherever their rookie card is. That's where I would be sticking with. Um, those, that's where you'll get the most bang for your buck. People also say Topps Chrome, and yes, Topps Chrome um, is the same thing. So those are the cards that you want to be sticking to. Anything else, any other fire, stadium club, even though they look nice, they're not going to give you the ROI, the return on investment. Look at this. We're sounding like an investment channel here. Folks, buy now. Uh, no, what's that guy from Mad Money, Kramer. Um, so, I lost my train of thought. What the hell was I even talking about, guys? I know what I was talking about. Sorry, I'm breathing in and out that's probably a little gross so let me let me just have a little sip okay buy lots of cards go on ebay go on comp check the solds make sure they are over 25 and if they are at 25 then you need to figure out do you think this will go up and why don't just go yeah you think it's gonna go up look at this guy he's unbelievable check comparable players Check his stats from this year. Don't just do it. Have At least have a thought process. Slow yourself down if you are um, betting that he's going to do well. Um, I would stick to 30. I would even say 35. That's where, that's where your sweet spot is. Um, now, like I said, like my Eloy, I think he's actually going to go down a little bit just because it seems like a lot of money for a base PSA 10. There's probably not that many of them yet. Um, but people are seeing, people are going to start bringing, you know, getting this stuff graded. More supply, that's going to drop down, um, especially in the off season. So the only thing that you ha then have to worry about, um, not worry about it, is, you know, it, will, it should go back up to that range if he plays well again. So, just, just also factor that in that cards also during this time for baseball will be going down a little bit. Not the guys in the playoffs. They will go up if they do something well, 
But if you're looking at rookie cards, prospects, things like that, they're going to go down, especially November, December. All right? So that, that's pretty much it. I think it's a, a good strategy. It's worked well for me. Um, I, I've bought plenty of stuff. Um, Facebook fire sales are also an excellent place. Uh, for these because a lot of people are just trying to get rid of these cards um, and so they you know they're trying to get them on the cheap so if you're fast enough you'll be able to get them um, for certain players other players not if it's a Tatis, Vlad Guerrero, Alonzo those things are going to go fast and you're going to pay a premium for it because those are big guys right now wait till November, December take a look at comp comp they're a little higher right now um but eBay, you can get some good deals. You can, you can find it if you're paying attention and um, you got to be following and doing your research. I'm at my job, svacardcollectors.com. Download the app, Flick Chat, where we have crazy conversations. Um, they're not crazy. It's just regular conversations. Also, Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine yards. You guys know what to do. Buy some cards and go broke. Later.